And we're live. Welcome to the fourth or third edition of Supper Heroes uh, Cookalongs. This is me, John O. Proudfoot, and tonight we are doing whitefish mounier or um, marinier, or I don't know, really know how to pronounce it, but it's a Belgian way of cooking whitefish. We're doing it with lemon and caper, and then we're going to serve that with a delicious broccoli, rocket, avocado salad, and then my unique way of making a salad dressing using milk and cream, cream fresh. I'm going to make a creamy almond dressing to kind of make this salad full and rich. So it's like summery salad ingredients, but with a winter rich, creamy flavor. So if you have tuned in and you're watching and you're cooking along with us, please make sure you like this post, share it if you want other people to cook along with you um, and gather yourself together. I'm just going to go through everything before we get cracking. So welcome, relax, pour yourself a glass of wine. Um, we're going to be cooking along just for the next 25 minutes before we have a delicious supper. Okay, so earlier on this week, I ordered fish using the Abalobi Marketplace app. My good friend, Chris Castern, he's driving the charge there. And basically that allows you to order fresh fish directly from small scale producers. So tonight I'm cooking um, silvers or carpenter. And carpenter, Carpenter is, it's a very light flavored fish. It's very, uh, very soft. Um, so if you can't get any carpenter, you could use hake. If you're in the UK, you could use cod. Um, it's, it, you know, it's very, very light fish. And this original recipe is from Low Cop Cooking, um, my cookbook, and it was using sole. Um, but basically the flavor is going to be lemon and caper and any fish that goes well with lemon and caper will go well in this recipe. And then I've got some lemons, some almonds, some creme fraiche, some milk, capers, butter. Um, that's not for the for the salad. What's up, Kate? I'm using some parsley. Oh, okay. We're just uh, behind on the old prep there. That's what the scissors were for. And then we're, we're doing, we've got some cool avocado, uh, and we're doing avocado, spring onion, uh, avocado, spring onion, broccoli salad, um, and that's going to be on a bed of rocket. So first things first, going to get started by just getting your flame up. We are going to go, the fish is the last thing we're going to cook. So we're going to blanch our broccoli and then we're going to make our salad. And then we're going to make the dressing. And finally, we are going to uh, make the fish. But by that point, the salad and the dressing will be all ready to go. So fire up your pot and get your water up to a rolling boil because we're going to do the broccoli now. And then if you have some ice already made. Grab a medium sized bowl um, and, and put some ice in it. Put about that much ice in it and then pour some cold water over the ice because we're going to create a little ice bath and I'll explain why just now. Okay, and you want to put in about that much water. Nothing too hectic. Um, Okay, so while we're waiting for that to boil, I've got these almonds, and these are raw almonds. So most of the time when you buy nuts, they'll be roasted. Um, is that my parsley? Thank you. But it's not for the salad. It's not for the salad. Okay, I got it. Thank you. That's for the fish. Okay, so I'm going to toast these almonds quickly. You could roast them in the oven. Usually when you buy nuts, they are roasted already. Uh, preferably don't use salted roasted. Uh, dry roast is always better because actually not dry roasted means that they've been like roasted in seed oils, otherwise known as deep fried. So I'm going to fire up my second stove. I think that's it. And just this is the frying pan I'm actually going to use for the fish. Um, but I'm just going to dry fry the nuts to give them a bit more of like a roasted toasted flavor. So if you want to join me and have roasted nuts, go for it. Camera angle, let's fix that. There we go. There you can see my nuts over there. Okay. And what are we going to get? We're going to get our broccoli together. So everyone grab your broccoli while this water is getting itself to the boil. I'm putting the lid on. No, I'm not going to put it on. And sometimes there'll be like a corky, woody sort of top to the broccoli. So I'm just going to top or tail all of these broccolis just to neaten up the edges. And that's kind of for aesthetic and for, for flavor. I mean, they wouldn't really impact the flavor too much, but it's going to make it look much prettier. 
and chuck that in your compost or in your bin, whichever you prefer. So I got this water is kind of about to boil. It doesn't need to be absolutely rolling boil because as soon as you drop the broccoli in, it's going to not boil anymore. And Okay, do you think I should thin these out? Okay, cool. All right. Close that, man. Close it. Get out. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just cut these lengthways to thin them out. They're going to cook faster that way um, because I'm still waiting for my water to boil. So if you want to join me, cut them nice and thin. Okay, that water is boiling nice and aggressively now. <laughs> oh yeah, awesome. Okay, thin, thin, medium thickness. Okay, now straight, ooh, ooh, ooh final step. Okay, so I've added some salt into the water and now I'm gonna add in the broccoli. And I'm just going to mix it so that all the broccoli sort of sits in the water and pop the lid on, pop the lid on for like a minute. And, and give the nuts a toss. So while those are blanching, go get your ice bath ready. Um, wash your hands, clean up. Sorry, we're having complications. We're trying to get the comments so that we can respond to comments. But every time we click on the flipping feed, uh, my voice pops up. So it's very distracting. That's why there's this like private joke going on here. Okay. So these nuts are toasting nicely. And the broccoli, what you'll see is as the broccoli starts cooking, it starts taking on this like bright green color. But we don't want to cook it to death. We don't want it to be like um, this brown or gray broccoli we're actually trying to lighten it up but we still want it to be sort of crunchy which is al dente and what al dente means is will directly translate it into uh, from italian is to the tooth which means we still want it to be crunchy so like a risotto pasta blanched vegetables those all need to be al dente if you want them cooked properly what else do you cook al dente Kate? Okay. i just said that Collie rice, not, not mush. I made mush like two weeks ago when we did the Thai chicken. You don't want mush collie rice. You want al dente collie rice. Okay. So the, these take like a few seconds to cook. And uh, now that they're cooked, I'll show you what they look like when they are cooked. So you can see they go bright green and they overcook quite quickly. So you want to act fast. Oh, Nick, wrong camera, dude. <laughs> There we go. That is a bright green broccolini. So we're going to take that straight out of the water and you're going to put them into the ice bath. And, and so if you take them out the water and you don't put them in an ice bath, they're already quite hot. So what happens is they end up cooking themselves to a state of being overcooked just by, uh, just with, with their own temperature. And that's obviously not what you want. So by putting them in an ice bath, you actually, um, halt the cooking process. So you stop them from cooking immediately. Okay, so we can take our hot water away. We don't need it anymore. Pop it in your sink. Let go. And that's great. Okay, so we're gonna leave these to cool. And now we focus our attention to the dressing, onto the dressing. So the nuts are hot. And obviously we wanna cool these nuts down. So we're going to blend them into a dressing. So we took them out into any old dish just so that they can cool off. And then we're going to get our dressing ingredients together. Let me move this. Did you make this pretty bowl of things for me? Yes. Put it over here so that's in the background. Here we go. Styling the set. Fruits, high in carbs. Okay. So where's my dish? Okay. So this dressing, unlike any other dressing where we like whisk, the mustard and the white wine vinegar and the olive oil together to emulsify it. 
This is actually like, we're going to blitz it because it's all creamy stuff. There isn't really an emulsification. It's just creamy. So grab your creme fraiche, your Dijon or your whole grain mustard, your vinegar and your milk. And I think that's it for now. Almonds. And your almonds. Okay, so the almonds are busy cooling. You've got your milk. And you can just add them all into, into any kind of jug that your stick blender is going to go into. Okay, so I'm adding my milk. This is about 100 mils of milk. Uh, and then my, I've got creme fraiche. You could use sour cream but cre or, or like softer cream cheese. I wouldn't go with Philly because it's a bit thick. Um, you had a tablespoon here somewhere, here, Kate. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So it's three tablespoons, but this is like three massive tablespoons. I'm going to go with three like... Oh, is it four tablespoons? Okay, so it's four like level tablespoons. So one... Two, three, four. Pop those in. I don't eat that much dairy anymore, so this is quite a treat. Okay, then how much whole grain mustard? One tablespoon or two? One. Okay. In this thing? Oh, look there. Okay. So one tablespoon of whole grain mustard. And... What else? Then the almonds. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't matter if your almonds are... Oh, and the red wine vinegar. Okay. So red wine vinegar, I think it says a tablespoon. It's three tablespoons. I just look at this and I think that must be a bit aggressive. Okay. Well, we can always, we're going to adjust at the end. So I'm putting in like two tablespoons and then the nuts. Okay. It's half a cup of nuts. I think that might be a bit more than half a cup. Okay. So once you've got everything together, grab your stick blender and just start blitzing it. I need to, I'm worried this is going to go everywhere. Anyway. Do you want to run and get the other stick blender? Oh, hang on. I don't know why that happened. Yeah, so I've gone on for quite a while doing this. The reason we're trying to get it really smooth. So the reason you use a stick blender and nothing else is because the so you could use um, almond butter, by the way, if you don't have the tools to grind this down. But when you add the vinegar into the milk, often what happens is like it gets split. So it separates the curds and the whey and goes a bit kind of like um, cottage cheesy. And, and that's why like when you blitz in the, the nuts and the mustard, all of these things like actually help keep it together. So I'm gonna keep blitzing it just to make it a little bit smoother. But if you've used nut butter, obviously it's much easier. Okay, now we taste. So it should be creamy, slightly acidic, but mostly it should be like nutty and full and creamy with a little bit of mustard coming in the background. But it should taste like roasted nuts, creamy roasted nuts. Okay. So we're going to park that for now. Leave it on the side. If your nuts are hot and the dressing's hot, obviously you can put it in the fridge for now. But it's supposed to be quite thick. Like It's not like a runny liquid. There we go. You can see it's quite thick. Okay. I can park that over there. OK, 
get rid of these little nuts. Okay, now by now, your broccoli should be nice and cold. Where are we here? So now we're gonna layer up the salad. You don't wanna have too much water in the salad because it's gonna dilute the dressing. It's gonna make your life a bit difficult. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer up this broccoli on a cloth. So you can see it's perfectly cooked. Now, I'm gonna keep this frame. You can see it's beautifully green and um, but it's still got its crunch. It's still got its shape. So we're going to plop this all onto a nice dish towel. And I'm just going to fold the dish towel over and give it a little bit of a shake to force all the liquid out onto the, onto the dish towel, really. Dish cloth, towel, whichever you prefer. Okay. Chuck that in there. And we're just going to... Fling the water around. Again, now we've got this beautifully dry, crisp broccoli. You can hear that crunch is there. Okay. So, to make the salad, the first thing we're going to do is put out our um, rocket. So, I've got my bowl of rocket here. You probably just open the packet and tip it out and spread it out nicely. And then, you take your broccoli and you kind of just plunk it down everywhere, however you like. Make sure it's evenly dispersed. Pretty simple. And Kate's laughing at me because I like never, ever make salad in the house. I'm not the salad guy. But here we go. Breaking stereotypes, left, right, and center. And then take these avos. Yeah, uh, spring onion is going to go on last, kind of like a garnish. So, have a... I had a knife here. Why do I always lose my knives? Okay. Where's that sharp knife? The paring knife, the paring knife yeah. Um, I think it's the same. Ah, it doesn't matter. Okay. So, getting my big knife. Nick, you can go on the, on the double... The, the, the double frame. Okay, here we go. So take your avo, cut it down the middle. And you obviously want to get it into your two halves. Smack it uh, and twist to get the pip out. And then I'll show you a trick. So you take your avo and you cut the lines down. To, it's very easy if you've got a has avo because the skins are much thicker. And you just cut it in a crisscross fashion and a crisscross fashion again. Um, so you've got these lines so i don't know if you can see that but they're like lines on the avocado there we go and we do the, and we repeat the same thing i'm going to show you a nifty trick now and if you've got a round headed knife you can actually push quite hard against the skin without breaking through and we'll do this one well let me show you the point of it the reason we do that is because then you can take your avo and you just scoop out everything and it's already cut. You don't actually have to go and cut it all up and get your fingers dirty. It's all done for you. There we go. So scoop out your two avos onto the salad. Sprinkle it over. And so I think if this salad feeds four, it's basically half an avo per person, which is plenty of good fat. It's going to be nice and nice and generous. No one's going to be fighting over the bits of avo. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's quickly get through this one. And then it's onto the fish. I'm just so glad this recipe taking time because I always get nervous cooking fish in front of Kate. <laughs> hey, twice in three weeks, yeah. And for those of you who uh, weren't here in the beginning, the, the fish that we're using today is carpenter. And we had a bit of a debate when we were cleaning the fish about why it's called carpenter. And even Chris, the guy who supplied us with the fish, basically was saying he has no idea. And apparently um, the name of the fish used to be kapanir. Uh, now that we don't know where that comes from. Oh, kapanir, because you could only get the fish in the cape. 
So it was like this Cape fish. And then when the English learned more about it, they, Kapanur was a bit too like Dutch for them. So they changed it to Carpenter. Um, but that's where the name comes from, Kapanur. Okay. Now, the salad's done, almost. The only thing left to do is to chuck some spring onions in. How many spring onions, Kate? Okay, three? Four. Well, it says five, so it seems like a lot. It seems like a lot. Okay, well, let's go with five little, four little ones. Okay, four little ones. We're going to cut the little roots off. And, uh, oh, no, here comes trouble. Here comes trouble. <laughs> yeah, they're on their way. They're coming in hot. We've got some co-stars arriving shortly. Okay. And we are going to cut these at an angle. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to cut. Let's just see if you can see my cutting board. Okay. Cutting it on the diagonal. Nick, you can go wide for this if you like. So I think in the prep, you would have done this already. Um, so I suppose I'm just giving you time to catch up. Unless you haven't done it yet, then you can go for it. Okay, so spring onions done. And sprinkle them over. Okay, now you should be left with this like super, super green salad. So yesterday I interviewed Robert Sivas and everyone was saying, if I can't eat carbohydrates, what am I going to eat? And we were saying vegetables and he's like, vegetables are carbohydrates. And right here... Here are a whole lot of green leafy vegetables or green vegetables. Hey, yo, yo, I haven't put the dressing on yet. I know the dressing is going to wait because it's still warm. But these are green vegetables. This is like the green list uh, live in action. Avocado, spring onion, broccoli. You don't get healthier than that. And now it is time to cook the fish. Okay. And here we go. So put the salad aside. Don't put the dressing on yet. And... Um, we're going to do the fish now. So before we start cooking the fish, I want you to get your fish dish ready, the dish you're going to serve your fish in. So I'm using this plate. This is like my platter for four. Um, and I'm going to get that ready so that, because what we're going to do is we're going to cook the fish and then we're going to, Nick, you can bring on the, um, the, the two screens thing. Yeah. So we're going to cook the fish. I'm going to put it on the platter. And then while it's sort of like cooling on the platter, we're going to make our sort of like saucy thing in the fish pan and then pour that over. So before you start cooking the fish, make sure your fish dish is ready. Um, and now I'm just going to season the fish with lots of salt and pepper. All right. So childcare is leaving. We are now in charge of the kids and it's going to get real. So please excuse any distractions, but uh, this is a real family and I'm cooking the legit supper for tonight. Have a wonderful evening. Off you go. Bye. <laughs> okay. So fire up your stove. And while the pan's getting hot, we'll season the fish. So if you've got a bigger pan than this, rather use the bigger pan. The bigger the pan, the better. And you want to get it onto a high heat. Okay. Hello, my girl. All right, high heat and then season. So... I'm not going to do, because we're only supposed to be doing four, four portions. It's dinner for four. So I'm going to take two out and put them somewhere. You got a plate for me, Kate? No, I've got two children. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Two children out, trumps a plate. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to keep the four small ones and then we'll take the two big ones out. So here's a big, big one. Okay. We'll keep these ones for supper tomorrow night. Angus, off. Off, off, off. <laughs> She's like. It's very nice. Okay. So, lots of salt and pepper. Give it a solid grinding of salt and pepper. Especially because we're going to put it skin side down. Okay. Okay, so at this point, you're going to tell your friends and family or hopefully just family to go and sit down. Midji, watch the tripod behind you, my girl. Okay. 
and you're going to throw some oil in the pan. Okay, Nick, we've lost Kate, so you might have to put the steps in there. Okay, so pan's super hot, and this is the trick. What we're going to do is, as I drop the fish in to the pan, I'm going to shake the pan. And what that's going to do is going to stop the fish from sticking to the pan. So skin side down, and as it goes in, watch, I'm going to shake, and that's going to make sure it doesn't stick. Shushal. And shushal. And you want to do this just for the first, like, first kind of 30 seconds or 20 seconds to make sure that it, it, it actually doesn't stick. And what it's doing is it's crisping up the bottom while, while the pan is moving. So it's crisping up in the oil, and when, once it's crispy, it can't stick, obviously. There we go. How much longer do you think I have to shushel it for? You can go. Bye. Again, while you've got this frying, bye. While you've got this frying up, you can season the base. So chuck in some salt and pepper. And, and you don't need to worry about this. What we're going to do is we're going to cook it so that it's white, basically almost all the way through, and then just flip it for like a few seconds. So... I'm not, we're going to leave this for a couple more minutes, and while that's happening, you can season the rest of your fish. So I've got two more pieces here. Um, there's some salt and pepper on the one side. Because I've got time, put some salt and pepper on the other side. Now, I used olive oil here because um, Kate's dairy-free, but the recipe does call for butter, and in... France or Belgium, where this dish comes from, it would be butter. So I'm just using olive oil here. And I'll show you like how to lash dressings over one half of the salad. But Kate won't have the dressing because it's got dairy in it, obviously. So um, that's, that's why I'm going to do like a slight adjustment to it. Um, but all of these recipes, most of them will do. You can actually change the, the butter for olive oil. So keep an eye on your fish. Make sure it's not burning. A little bit of salt in here. And then while this is happening, I'm miles, I think I'm a bit behind because you would have sliced your lemons already. But I'm just going to slice up my lemons and chop a few of my capers. So I want these lemons to be super thin because you basically want them to be almost translucent once they're finished frying. And you only want to cut as, as much lemon as you can really fit in the frying pan. So if I look at the size of the frying pan, you know, probably wouldn't fit more than this many slices of lemon uh, in the pan. So we'll leave that. We'll keep the rest for juice. And then we grab our capers. And I think it says chop the capers. I'm going to chop half, and then I'm going to just leave the other half whole. And those are going to go into the sauce too. So roughly chop. Okay, now... The fish is almost ready. So you've got your capers, your lemons, the juice, everything's on standby, and then you've got this fish. And I'm trying to figure out like, if you can see there, maybe that's that you can see it's kind of like cooking, it's white, and then it's slightly opaque still on the top. So let's see how close we can get in there. You can see the white there, and then let's see on that camera. Okay, Nick, pull it in. There we go. Can you see it's like white with a little bit of cookedness at the top? That's what we want. Now we're ready to flip it. So, my flipper. Oh, here we go. So, shushal. Make sure it's not stuck. And flip. There we go. And shushal. And flip. And you're just going to leave it for like 20 seconds just to cook that last little bit. We don't want it more cooked than that. That's like perfect, perfect. And you want it to be slightly raw when you take it off the heat. Because like I said with the broccoli earlier, that heat from the pan is going to make it carry over cooking. It's called carry over cooking, which is when the heat of the ingredient cooks itself. And fish is like notorious for this. So you can take something out of the pan when you think it's perfect and you leave it on the plate. And then its own heat overcooks it. It happens with steak as well. 
And I think that's about it. So take that off. Oh, and I forgot. You should shushel when you flip it as well. Anyway, here we go. So one piece and another piece. And look at the color on that. You can see it's like nice and golden brown. Okay, and up that goes. Back in the pan, another squidgel of olive oil. You don't want to put in all the fat because you want a little bit more for the sauce afterwards. Okay, and again, pan needs to get nice and hot. If you want to take a second to clean the pan, like if you did actually stick a little bit, it's not going to be great if there's still that sediment for the second round of fish. If it's for the sauce, then that's fine because the sauce, you can get all that like roasted stuff in it. But if you are going to fry the next piece of fish, you actually want a clean pan. Otherwise, it's more likely to stick and you're going to like kind of destroy it a little bit. So smoking hot pan, shushel, drop the fish, shushel, oh, shake it. Okay. Now we just leave it. And oh, we can chop the parsley because we're going to need that. So I'm putting the capers back into this little thing and um, pop them back there. I don't know why I've got so many lemons. Just keep that lemon for juice. Obviously, I've lost all my recipe and ingredients, but I'll, I'll see the steps on the screen. I do know the recipe, so I'm going to wing it based on the theory of how it should work. Okay, so this parsley, you will have this parsley chopped already by now, but I'm just going to get mine up to scratch, buy you guys some time. So parsley, let's get it going here. And sometimes you can use the stalks in certain instances, but in this instance, it's going for a very quick run in the pan. So if you were going to add this to like a soup or a stew, and it's going to cook for another 15, 20 minutes, just add the stalks when you're chopping them anyway, because they're going to soften up and cook down and you get all that flavor. But in this instance, we're actually chucking them in at the very last minute and it's just giving like this blast of freshness. And because of that, we actually want as little stalk as possible. But if you've got your stalks in there already, don't worry about like fishing them out. That's fine. Okay. There we go. And almost there. You can see my fish is coming along nicely. It's getting nice and opaque at the top. We're going to flip it in a second, but I'm just going to run my knife through the parsley quickly. Okay. So if you haven't chopped your parsley yet, trick, take it, scrumple it up into the tiniest little bowl you can and uh, run your knife through it. I'll give a, a comprehensive lesson on knife skills at some point, actually. It's a good idea, but for now, that's enough. Okay, so move it, make sure it's loose, grab the thingy, and flip it. Here we go. This is also beautifully colored, nice and crispy on the back. Oh, that is good. See that? That's fantastic. And basically, I think that's done because it's going to carry over, cook itself for a little bit longer, and it's very, very hot. So maybe give it like 30 seconds. Maybe less than 30 seconds, like that. Trishel. Plants it in the platter. Okay, now, your pan is still hot. You've got all that juice from the fish. You've got your seasoning, and it's lacquer in there. So you've got leftover butter, I think. Now you want to chuck in your lemon pieces. And... Oh, it looks like I can have a few more. 
So you, you don't really want to be like layering this up. But you want to chuck in the lemon pieces and fry fry them in the in that fat. And you want to add in extra fat because this this fat is like your sauce. So here we go. You want to just fry these and move them around because the juice from the lemon is going to like pick up pick up all that um, fish sediment. It's going to scrape the fish flavor off the pan, but it's also like caramelizing the lemon pith so that you're going to get this like bitter sweet flavor coming into the fish sauce. And I'm going to chuck in my capers. Let them fry away. And you can now smell like there's this aromatic sort of like lemony marmalade uh, smell coming out of the pan. And flip it again. Oh. So what we're actually doing here is the sauce, the base of the sauce is actually olive oil. So what we're really doing is we're infusing the olive oil with all of these other flavors. So if it's butter, you're actually infusing the butter with all of these flavors. So I'm chucking a bit more. Move it around. And look at that, like that is flavor there. That is flavor. There we go. That's beautiful. So it's gone soft. The lemons have deteriorated. So like the pith of the lemons gone soft and it's released all its juices in. Now that is going to be quite bitter and you want it to be slightly more acidic and, and sweeter than it is bitter. So to do that, you just take like another half a lemon or another half of a lemon and you just squeeze the juice in. So I'm going to squeeze this juice in. Very lemony. And finally, last thing we're going to do is just throw in this big handful of parsley here. And now you can toss it because the parsley is just sitting on top. You actually want to have that parsley infused. So you can toss it around. Okay. And this is where the this is now the final step. So I'm turning the temperature off. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Okay. I wish this was in a white frying pan so you could see the contrast of colors, but we're going to see it on this platter now. So I'll move my board. Okay, where's this camera? If you want to aim it down a little bit, so you can see here. Okay. So now. You take a tablespoon and you put like a piece of lemon on each fish if you want. It's they're obviously all completely deteriorated, so it's not like the end of the world if you get two pieces. Now don't eat the lemon, but you can squeeze the lemon to get some of that extra like um, juice out of it because you, you will have bits and pieces of pulp. But this, and then you take all the sauce out. So all of that delicious sauce, and you spoon it over. Pour it. Okay. So now if you look at this, trying to see the light's not good on that side. So I'll show you here. That is like lemon, caramelized lemon, parsley, and caper buttered fish. That is going to be awesome. And then we're going to take our salad and find a tablespoon, some avo on it. Give it a little whack. And now all the flavors from this dressing, they will have infused. Mm. And you're just going to lash. 
bits of the dressing over. And that is your supper hero supper. So Nick, bring um, take the top shot out because I think I've got actually better angle on the on the main camera. Um, cool. So have a look here. We've got this salad and this beautiful fish dish. And now go down. Well, go and sit down and have yourself a delicious meal. Because I think you're a hero and you've made a delicious low carb rich meal. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, pop them in the post and we'll get back to you a bit later. If you enjoyed that and if you enjoy your meal, please like this um, post and share it. Please invite your friends to join Supper Heroes. Um, tell your mates we're, we're having a very good time cooking for you every Wednesday night. And I hope you enjoy joining me. So have a wonderful evening. And that's me over and out.